another day another swift video what's going on everyone welcome back to another swift video today we're going to be taking a brief look at dark mode so i'm sure you're all familiar with dark mode is i'm not going to be that person and explain it but more interestingly we're going to look at how we can build our app to automatically adjust the text colors and background colors and all that good stuff to dark mode if the user changes the theme. We're also going to look at how to actually change the theme by going to our settings, developer, and flipping the switch. And you'll notice when we go back to our app, our app has automatically adjusted. We've got this really nice contrast going on between this container view, the text color changed, the background color changed, all that good stuff. So. That said, make sure you smash that like button down below. Helps out the YouTube algorithm quite a bit. Helps me create more videos for you all. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. Get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's jump right into it. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Let's get started by creating a new project. We'll stick with a single view application and let's call this project dark mode example, save it to our desktop and let's jump right in. So the first thing I want to demonstrate uh, is how a traditional view might have been implemented. Uh, and then we're going to switch on over to dark mode here and see what it looks like and what problems we might run into. So. The first thing we can do in here is let's create a UI view. Um, so we're going to say private let my view is a UI view. And in here we can create a UI view. Let's say the view has a background color of white. And let's return the view. And in our view to load, let's say view, add sub view, my view. Let's also give my view a frame and let's actually do that in here. So let's give it an X, Y within height. So for the X, we'll say 20, we'll say 100. Uh, for this, we'll say 200 and 100. And let's also copy this and create a label. So we're going to say my label, which is a UI label. And let's get rid of the frame part, make this a UI label. And we want the text color, in this case, to be black, so it's visible on the white background. And it's probably, probably a good idea to rename these variables. So let's rename these. And in our my view, we can add a sub view of my label. And let's set the my label frame to my view dot bounds. So let's run this and see what it looks like from a color perspective. So we should get our my view. Well, actually, it would be a good idea if we set a background color and some text so we can actually see it. So let's make the background color um, of the main view, let's say black. And let's also set the label text so we can actually see something there. So we'll say hello world. And we'll also set the text alignment to be centered. So let's see what we get now. Okay, cool. So we have our entire view is black. We have this white view, and then we have some text that's centered inside of it. So this looks good. It's legible for sure. So let's go in our simulator, uh, hit command shift O or command shift H to get to your home screen, hit settings and come down here, go to developer. And there's a dark mode toggle. Let's turn the switch on and you'll see that the simulator enters dark mode. So now let's go back to our app and everything still looks to be good. So let's say command R one more time 
And you notice nothing changed. Uh, in a dark mode scenario, what we might want to do is instead of have a white view and black text, we might want darker uh, color for the background. So maybe like a dark gray and white text. So the issue here in this case is nothing has changed for the light mode or dark mode. And the reason is, as you can probably allude to, is we used hard-coded white and black colors where we should have used semantic colors. So semantic colors is this concept where under the hood, uh, Apple has defined a light and a dark mode variant of a color, and those colors can dynamically adjust based on the current theme. So there's a bunch of semantic colors. So for this my view business, we're gonna say the semantic color is system or secondary system background and for the label we're gonna say the text color uh, is label and for the views background color we're gonna say the background is system background and let's fix that and let's hit command R and see what this looks like now so now we see the background is still black. The my view background is this dark gray, and then we have white for the label. But let's head on over to settings again and turn this toggle off and go back. And now you notice that the background is white. This is a very subtle gray, and this is black. So what's going on here is under the hood, by using semantic colors of this uh, like label, system secondary background. Uh, there's also a tertiary system background. Uh, system background, the system, so iOS, is able to dynamically switch the colors based on the view uh, theme. So it's super important that that concept is uh, apparent. So instead of doing if else cases or things like that and figuring out the state of things on your own, let the system handle a lot of it. Um, and the other thing I'll share is if we head on over to Apple's developer website and just search for dark mode, uh, they've broken down semantic colors in great depth here. So there's actually things like um, secondary, tertiary, uh, and quaternary backgrounds, and each of those provide another layer of uh, contrast. So you noticed in uh, dark mode, the background for the my view, which is a smaller one, was this darker uh, or lighter, I guess, dark gray. So if we take this secondary background and put it into our main views background and make this one tertiary system background and hit command R, you'll notice that there's still a difference uh, of contrast between the background here and the my view. So that's what the secondary tertiary business is. The other thing that's important, and it's uh, it's actually notated here in the documentation too, is you want to use colors for your images that are supportive of both light mode and dark mode scenarios. So a really good way to think about this is if you use um, certain types of images that you can tint, you can set a tint color and the image will actually update per the color of the semantic color. So this is something that Apple already has implemented with their SF system icons. So system icons that you might see, let's say, in the main settings app. So if we open this up, like on this screen, or any icons that you see in the system, adjust automatically with the theme. So instead of including two different variants of colored icons or images, you want to create icons and images that are dynamic. Let's see, what else? What else is important about dark mode? So there's also other types of colors, of course, you can imagine. So instead of using the black and white schemes, you can use things like system blue. And the reason it's considered system blue is because it's capable of um, looking good in light mode and dark mode. Now obviously blue is a color that you can visibly see in both, but the reason that it's part of the system color palette is Apple has gone ahead and created this palette to make sure that 
the colors aren't obnoxious and uh, eye straining in either scenario, light or dark. So these system colors oftentimes look really good. Uh, I myself use them in almost all of my apps now. There's usually not very, uh, not a lot of reason to define your own, but if you do want to design your own color palette, you can go ahead and use dynamic colors to supply a light mode and a dark mode. And the last thing I'll mention before wrapping up this rather short video is if you're in a case where you have an older application and you're migrating to support dark mode, sometimes updating all your colors isn't uh, ideal or even possible. So what you could in fact do for every view controller is check the current theme. And you can check that by checking the trait collection on a view or a view controller. And specifically in the collection, you want to check the user interface style. So this actually gives you a enum and you can either get dark, light or unspecified. So oftentimes what people will do, including myself, uh, when you're migrating an old legacy project to support dark mode is have a switch statement. And if it's uh, dark, do something. Um, if it's light, do something. And if it's default, AKA it's not specified for whatever reason, do something else. And the something of course would be reconfigure your user interface to use appropriate colors or themes. So this is how you can manually check the actual uh, coloring. It's strongly advised to actually use the color palettes and dynamic colors and such as uh, Apple extends dark mode and other color capabilities. It definitely helps your app be more modern and stay up to speed. Uh, and honestly, the other thing is also if you use this method uh, instead of just a migration tool, but a final way to ship dark mode supported apps, you're going to have to include redundant assets. So you can imagine if you have a hundred images in your project and now you want to include a hundred that are dark mode uh, specific that support the color scheme, it makes your app size larger, which is not ideal for a number of reasons. So that's basically it. That is a very quick overview of what dark mode is, how to support it, what semantic colors are. Um, I will mention that all of this in terms of coloring is supported in the storyboard as well. So if you have outlets, uh, feel free to assign any of these semantic colors and everything will work as expected. So that said, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you're new for daily Swift videos. Comment if you have any questions or suggestions or just want to say hi. I always love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.